randomly, right, um, this video went somewhat viral on Twitter that features a group of girls who come back from going to the basement, which is essentially New York's version of Bergheim. Not really, but it's one of the clubs where they have a door picking policy. Um, they have a no pictures policy inside. Um, they book maybe some of the same artists. So, you know... Uh, a lazy kind of comparison to say it's sort of like a somewhat similar to Bergheim, but having read some reviews online, it's not really similar or in real regard, um, but it's kind of a best way to kind of describe it. But I guess these girls thought that they could tick all the boxes and kind of get in. They didn't get in, they got rejected and they're on the bus back home mulling over the fucking failed night that they're having which is always horrible when you go out and you get rejected from a club even in a place like berlin people always say a lot oh if you get rejected from berghain doesn't matter because there's all these clubs in berlin you can just go to that's all well and good to say but still getting denied feels like shit i've never got denied touch wood thankfully i think you know we know why but i've never been denied but i'm sure it does feel horrible even if you know you could go to fucking Trezor, you could go to Aiden, Club Ost, fucking RSO, all these places around you could go to have a good time. It still feels like shit and it still feels incredibly personal when somebody rejects you. So I don't blame these girls for fucking throwing a fit and being really upset about it. The way they did it was fucking hilarious. I'm going to play the video for you now. It might be one of the funniest club rejection things i've seen in a really really long time and i fucking love them for their honesty about it because i feel like most people have felt this way but usually you're embarrassed about getting rejected so the last thing you want to do is record a video of yourself admitting that you got rejected you're just going to carry on the night like nothing happened but these girls are laying it bare and they're making it known that basement is fucking racist and sexist so let's play it here so we're on the bus because we got uh turned away from the basement for some uh miraculous reason it's queer night <laughs> two arabs again but it's a gender neutral space and we didn't look artsy or gay or POC enough for them yes. but barbie got in say that again and then they were talking about like you're not wearing all black some of that shit barbie got in pink pants and uh, what they asked was that like have you been here before no do you know who the dj is like we don't know the DJs, but we have never seen them before. Yeah. Bye, we funded. And we were just like, we don't want to get in, but we want to know why. Uh, 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 uh. Basement, you are sexist. Like 10 men before us got in. We are night. Lies. The guy who checked our IDs was good. Everyone else. Anyway, so as you can see, these ladies were not happy in the slightest. And the honest thing about this is that what makes it really funny to me is that they went to a, a techno club in the hopes of getting in based on who they brought along with them. So essentially, she did, she's admitting to tokenizing her friends. So she says queer behind her basically you know insinuating that two of her friends behind her are queer and that they're clearly not you know they may be racially ambiguous maybe one is somewhat asian maybe one isn't white white maybe she's got a dash of fucking remaining i don't know what it is but i just find that fucking hilarious that she took two of her friends who are queer to this club in the hopes of getting in and they still rejected them <laughs> and then she's like oh two arabs that means like non-white thinking that that gives you a pass <laughs> and it still got rejected that's what fucking makes me laugh because that's what you get taught online if you go online and you listen to these fucking donuts that say oh here's how to get into the Bergheim here's how to get into this sort of exclusive club right they'll tell you to wear black and to put on a dog collar to have like a harness on and to essentially gayify yourself to get into these nightclubs which is absolutely horrendous in my personal opinion the last thing that I would want when I go out is to be wearing clothes that I wouldn't normally wear when I go out. I don't want to put on a fucking costume. That's why I don't go to fucking Halloween parties. That's why I don't go to fancy dress parties. I don't want to put on a costume. I want to wear what I actually wear naturally. Things that go with my style, things that I kind of, you know, I'm congruent with. So yes, I'm going to wear what I want to wear. And also I want to dye my own sword. If I don't get in based on who I am, cool no problem but i'm not gonna go there and fucking you know fag myself up to make it kind of make sense so i can kind of walk in that's weird i've never understood those kind of recommendations people do that so people that say people that listen to that kind of vice this is what happens to you because people can smell you from a distance they can smell your inauthenticity from a distance especially if you're in the business of door picking door picking already is a bit strange of a profession but if you do it well 
the idea behind door picking is that actually you're doing the punter a favor you're trying to um figure out if the person that's coming to the door is a good fit for the night inside you're trying to help them out say hey i don't want you to go out there and be freaked out by what's going on because you don't get it and then you're going to be exuding this vibe of being freaked out that's going to make people feel uncomfortable in the space that they're meant to be feeling uncomfortable in so not tonight go somewhere else where you might fit in a bit better but surely if you're going to these sort of clubs you have to do some level of research some level of fucking opspec to figure out what's going on the major sort of red flag for me in this sort of complaint is that they said they didn't know who was playing i feel like if you go to a nightclub and you go specifically to a big, especially a big popular one that's hard to get into. One thing you should always do is try to acclimatize or familiarize, familiarize yourself with the lineup. When the Bergheim lineup comes out, you know, people, most of the people, myself included, you're going to try and Google all the names that you don't recognize and figure out if they're people that you want to see and listen to. I think, I'm not really too sure if this is true, but I think there was a time, maybe I'm misremembering this, but there was a time when I used to go to Bergheim, the bouncers would walk down the queue and if they didn't think you'd fit, they'd kind of tell you to go. And I personally think that should be reintroduced because when I last went in like June for that fucking Club Sylvester, the special event they do, right? It broke my heart because... I was in a queue with a couple of normie guys, like these American dudes, and it was clear to me that they were not going to get in. Number one, they were getting fucking smashed in the queue, which people don't usually do. They were talking a bunch, really loudly, which people don't do also. You kind of have to behave yourself, be a bit quiet. And just be, kind of being themselves, having fun in the queue that you do in, in normal nightclubs, right? I knew that they wouldn't get in, deep down. But we were in the queue for like four hours, just standing there because it was a special event. It was super busy, not moving. And I thought to myself, why don't the bouncers come down in the queue? The queue's not moving anyway. And just say, hey, stop waiting here. You're not going to get in. Just leave. That would have probably done everyone a favor. But they kind of let you get all the way up to the front and then they reject you. That's the only thing that I don't really like. So I feel like the fact that they rejected them so quickly and said, hey, just carry on your night is a good thing. Uh, maybe New York, not the best because, I don't know, maybe because of the location or fucking basement is super far from everywhere else so you can't really go to other places. That might be a bit of a bummer. But I feel like the bouncers probably did them a bit of a favor telling them not to go there because most likely the vibe wouldn't have, you know, clicked with them when they went in there and they probably would have recognized they realized a mistake. They made a mistake before uh, whilst they're in there and it'll be a bit too late. But I want to quickly see actually the reviews of the club itself in fucking Google. Um, it's called Basement NYC. Um, someone says here, the seven, seven, what, five stars actually, seven months ago. One of the best parties I've been to so far. Um, real dark techno with awesome sound system. We came from Toronto and we had a blast. Another person says, we need to get a reel in these reviews. Dress in black or dark colors. No big groups. Don't ask too many questions. Look like you belong there. Um, stop smiling. Even don't be on your phone in line. <laughs> Do everything the bouncers say. Yes, it's a vibe base, so work on... Exactly. See, I actually agree with this. I'm not going to lie. Don't be on your phone in line. Do everything the bouncers say. Yes, it is quote-unquote vibe-based, so work on your vibe. Once you're in, amazing experience. There's nothing wrong with this. They actually, they, I don't agree with dressing up and pretend to be someone that you're not. But actually trying to improve your vibe so that you kind of match what's going on in there so that you can fucking get in is the bare minimum you should be doing, personally. Um, another person says here, it's one of the few places where I can dance and immerse myself in music. One star review says, most terrible experience at this place. We had a group of six people and when we were waiting in the gate, they directly, directly denied our entry without any reason. They are definitely discriminating against certain groups. They are using a vague so-called vibe check to disguise their discrimination behavior. <laughs> Do not come to this place. You'll be the next victim of the night. It will be ruined. Putting the entire success of your night into going to one specific club is immensely lame and radiates dork-like behavior, personally. No club, no person can dictate the success of my entire night. I can have times where I go out certain places and it's not to my liking, right? Maybe I'm a little bit annoyed that it's maybe not the best, but it's not going to fucking dictate my entire night. And most likely, if I have one bad experience, I just won't go back again. I'm not going to fucking sit there and write a review. But anyway, we can we move. Another person. Reset a bad experience at Basement and Why. My friends waited in line for an hour, only to be greeted by a manager who asked why we were there. I'm surprised people are getting triggered by being asked why you're there. Surely, if you're that excited to go to a party or go to a rave, 
right? Or go to a club night or to see a DJ. You should be like, oh my God, I can't wait to come and see. Or actually, I'm here to see the fucking closer. It's this person, this, like, that's actually quite interesting. Like, why are you here? Why did you come here? Like, you just decided on the whim, just like, come on, man. That's a bare minimum. Oh, anyway, oh my God, it's a fucking essay. When we uh, uh, responded that we were there to have a good time. <laughs> I think American people have the same thing that we have in England. We don't really do well with door picking c culture. It's not a thing. I think that's the reason I remember reading or watching a documentary on Studio 54. That's part of the reason why Studio 54 kind of crumbled. Studio 54, that documentary, right? It's really good because what it details is that it was first a quote unquote community space a kind of a safe haven for the LGBTQ plus scene, right? In some respects. Then it turned into like a celebrity hangout and a cool spot. And then the priority kind of shifted in terms of getting kind of the people in from the community in and most of celebrities. And I think that's what led to the end because then the regular people got disgruntled, they caused a ruckus outside and that eventually led to the fucking closure of the club. That is what I think led to it. So in general, America and Britain we kind of share that kind of similar vibe when it comes to clubs. People just feel like if they have money, they can get in. That's why door, you know, clubs in central London that have door picking things or make you wait in line and only let girls at a certain time. They also have bad reviews, but people hate that. People just expect if they have money, they can get in. They don't understand the concept of door picking or why it's useful um, in clubs and shit. They don't get it, which is why it usually only works in certain places like Berlin and shit. And for the most part, other places, it doesn't work because people just don't fuck with it in the slightest. They don't understand. I have my money. Why can't I go to a club? Let me in. You know what I mean? They don't fucking get it. Um, it takes a lot to kind of get them around to it. And even if you do explain it, it still sounds a little bit, you know, pick and choose, discriminatory, whatever. Anyway, we move. It says, um, when we responded that we were there to have a good time, he abruptly told us to leave, <laughs> claiming that the club wasn't for us. As an Asian person, I couldn't help but feel discriminated against and targeted for no reason. <laughs> it was clear that the manager's actions were a senseless attack on minorities, specifically Asian community. Come on, that's a fucking stretch. Come on. Because of your one bad experience, all Asians are not allowed in the club. Um, afterwards, we asked the security personnel for an explanation, but they were unable to provide any legitimate reasons for the manager's behavior. They requested, no, they suggested that, uh, that our attire or my female friend's sequin dress. <laughs> no Zara dresses. <laughs> no Zara dresses. No Todd's loafers. Like, nah, you're not getting in with those, bruh. They suggested that our attire and my friend's secret dress may have been um, the cause, uh, but everyone else at the club was dressed similarly, not not more extravagantly. I am appalled by no. To be honest, if you if if your friend is dressing, if your friend has a secret dress on to go to a, a techno nightclub, you probably don't know what good clothes look like, or you can't probably discern between what people are wearing. I'm assuming, but hey. I'm appalled by the club's discrimination against Asians and their complete discard for our time and enjoyment. This experience has left me feeling disrespected and humiliated. I will never return to the basement NY club. I urge others to be cautious when considering this establishment as their treatment of minorities is completely unacceptable. Come on, man. Stretch. Um, another one says, have come here for a bunch, received very bad experience from the guy at the door, tall black man, Ooh, the black men are racist he was racist to me and let all my brown friends in line before us but not one white man so white man is complaining about not being let into a club welcome welcome sir welcome have a seat have a seat next to us have a seat have a seat but not <laughs> and decided to let half my friend group in and not and the other half we were all dead sober so this is hilarious. Whoever the security guard is at basement, I'll give you props. He let in all <laughs> He let in all the brown friends and denied all the whites. <laughs> well done. We were all dead sober. Very rude. Whenever someone says that, they're lying. Dead like whenever someone mentions how sober they were, they're lying. Basically. Um very rude and disrespectful and did not give us a refund or reason. Very pretentious considering we have come here multiple times. We already had tickets. <laughs> Last one here. Basement is an abhorrent institution that rejected a group of five of my friends for no given reason. Claiming it was a private location. Basement claims to be LGBTQ plus friendly community that turned away six 
openly queer people on Pride Night who had tickets for no reason. Bruh, nah, man. If you want to go to a fucking Pride Night, you can't be queer. You have to kind of go for the. You have to go for it all the way. Are you gay or not? Nah? No queer. No queer in between. Queer is another night. Another night you can do the whole queer thing. But if you want to come into a Pride Night, are you gay? Yes or no? If you're not, fuck off. I'd imagine if, if it was me and I was in a gay club, the last thing I'd want is fucking, you know, ambiguous, I'm not too sure, queer, I kiss the girl on a night out, people. Nah, I want gay people in there and that's it. Straight stay at home. That's all you want. It's fucking pride. Why do you want fucking people that are like, ah, I kissed the girl once on my staff night, a fucking a work party, uh, I kissed the man for a finance. That's not queer, bruh. That's you just being freaky and a bit horny. Are you gay or not? If you're not, go away. Go to another club. Go to, two, what are they called? Go to, um, I don't know, those bars, those cocktail bars that have dance floors in. That might work out for you. When, when, when we asked for a reason, the bouncer said um, they might be because we had never been before. Incorrect. Or for vibe reasons. I love that they're saying that on the, on the floor, on the door, because at Burkheim, if you get rejected, they just tell you to fuck off, basically, if you ask too many questions. They're not really going to tell you shit. And people sometimes do say, hey, why? But most people don't because they're scared of their bouncer. But if you do ask, they don't really tell you. They tell you after a while, hey, go, go away. It's my house. You're not allowed in. No, so that's what they say. At the end, if you keep going, they'll say, it's my house. I'm not, I'm not letting you in or something. But I love that the bouncers in fucking New York are saying, you don't match the vibes. You're not a good vibe. Like that, That's quite insulting. <laughs> that's actually quite hurtful so we're telling you don't pass the vibe aka you're not cool go home <laughs> go watch a boiler room set or something <laughs> get fucked um another bouncer threatens to carry us out of the club and then denied that he physically threatened us that's not physically threatened that's just a suggestion would that be to carry you out of the club <laughs> considering the long history of homophobia in club settings it's absolutely repulsive that this institution will hold a pride night and then have this bouncers physically threaten visibly queer ticket holders what does visibly queer mean what does that even mean visibly queer was you fucking snogging samantha from finance in the fucking line hoping that to get you in was you wearing a sequin dress? <laughs> Physically queer. We were inquiring about the legality of this. Do you know God? Legality. If you care about the safety of queer people in nightlife. <laughs> legality, yo. People are such dorks, man. There's nothing there's nothing more lamer than getting rejected at a club and then causing that much of a stink. In you know, the only thing more lamer than that is actually going to a club in the first place. The fact that I go to Bergheim and that I subject myself to these fucking techno nightclubs and these clubs in Fold in London and shit and I'm out here queuing and I'm going to forests to go and party in warehouses. I'm lame anyway. I'm fucking lame, right? Cool. We know that. But in my head, I think I'm cool, but the action of itself is fucking lame. The last thing I'm going to do is start ranting and raving if I don't get in somewhere or if it doesn't match my fucking expectations. I might not like something, cool. I'll say my two piece, but I'm not going to look into the legality of it or, you know, fucking put out a warning signal for people. Don't come here. Your safety might get ruined. It's like, come on, man. Relax. Relax. It's not that deep. Really, it's not that deep. But again, I think most people don't go out with a knowledge of what they want to expect in nightclubs, uh, of what to, you know, no research. They're not going there finding out who's playing, the understanding of the culture, of the club, um, whatever it may be. And they're just expecting to just pull out their wallet, go somewhere and get expected to go into places because they have the money to go in places. And some places are not like that. Some people take a lot more care in the kind of, you know, in sort of like programming the space and make sure everyone sort of fits in the vibe and kind of adds to it. Because unfortunately, the main point of the clubs is most clubs are the same. Apart from the sound and stuff, most clubs are basically the same. The thing that makes and breaks clubs for the most part is the vibe on the inside. It's the community that's in there. And sometimes you can cultivate that yourself based on very strict door policies. And it can be hurtful for some people, but usually in the long run, it does help to kind of make sure the club is thriving and successful and a fun place for people to actually go in there week in, week out, unfortunately. Because that's the reason why people are going there. They're obviously going to the basement because it's a fucking fun time in there because they've done a really good job to cultivate the fucking, you know, the, the people that go in there, the community, and make sure it's all good. So it kind of is what it is, really, in that respect. You kind of have to know where you fit in. You kind of have to know where you fit in. 